Hi, I'm Sarah Diener from AOPA, and we're here at DeLand Airport in Florida. We just flew the Bristel B-23 Energic Airplane with the H-55 electric propulsion system. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. The propulsion system in the Energic is a technological spin-off of the Solar Impulse Project, which flew a solar-powered airplane around the world, concluding in 2016. Members of the Solar Impulse team launched H55 to certify electric propulsion systems for aviation. This airplane is its first application. This is Marcus Schodel, uh, who is the lead for flight testing for the H-55. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the system? Yes, I will start with the battery. So we have two main batteries. They all consist of several cells. At the end, we end up with 600 volts uh, system. And we have two main batteries. One is in the left wing and one is in the right wing. And there are some uh, parts of that battery that also under the um, engine cowling in front of the firewall to get CG right for the airplane. So what we're looking at is the electric propulsion system of H55. Um, this would be um, the first um, standalone type certificate um, of a whole propulsion system. And the propulsion system, in the way we define it, is the drivetrain and um, the um, batteries and energy management. So let me start with the motor here. This is um, a motor that we don't produce, but it's our part number. It's, uh, we own the design, we own the IP. And what's interesting about this motor, it's a dual channel, dual coil, so there's redundancy. So think of it as two motors. And this you don't have in single piston, right? They, if there's a failure in single piston, you have to glide to the next airport. We have a motor controller. That's our design as well. There is no certified motor controller out in the market, so we had to do that ourselves. Think of this as the old gas tanks. These are the batteries, right? This is where we store the energy, okay? The energy goes into a battery management unit. This is the software that takes the energy and puts it into the power and distribution unit here. So this is where um, energy meets the power, okay? And then that goes back into the motor controller, into the motor. So we got to fly it earlier today, and um, the thing that stood out to me the most was just how quiet it is. And then you can go to 10 kilowatt with a throttle, and it's <laughs> yeah, that you do this. So you see the number here, you can also go for the pointer, whatever. But... And that's our first check. So that's like an RPM on a normal airplane. And what we want to see is we want to see uh, amps on both sides, which we are. Eight and eight is good. Eleven hundred, eleven hundred. Okay, you can go back to idle. That's a whole check. <laughs> That's it. Um, so when you start up, um, it the the propeller doesn't need to spin, uh, but they have it start spinning right away. It doesn't pull any uh, power from the battery, uh, but that's so that people will know that there's a um, an engine running. All right. Okay. So your airplane, your taxi. All right. And the, and the propeller is spinning now mainly for yeah. everybody else's benefit. Yeah, that's right? for awareness. I mean, yeah. you see, it, it's not using any power. And it's super quiet. The land traffic, uh, Sierra X ray Delta is crossing runway 23 for 12. What kind of impressions do uh, people have when you've taken them flying? It's, it's spacious, it's roomy, it's quiet. Uh, it's very responsive in flying. You will see that. But very quiet. Yeah, it is. You're doing good, but going to, to idle. Most of the guys keep the prop a little bit running. Like they're so <laughs> much used to it that the engine is not stopping, uh, keeping it alive. <laughs> and you can hear the change in the propeller, but it's more a tonal change than yeah, a... Yeah, but, but uh, that, uh, that power setting, yes. But yeah. in flight, there is not uh, a lot of change between 2000 and 2001 at RPM or so. Is there anything that replaces the run-up? Yes, that is a test of the override switch, ah. but it's only 10 seconds. So instead of a traditional run-up and mag check, um, there, there's a different test. Do you want to tell us about it? Yes. I mean, the startup of this engine is very easy. We have a three-position switch that controls the motor electronics. It's off 
or you can arm it so all the components are powered but the motor cannot turn the propeller so this is a safety position the, the throttle is not active even if you would move it but you can check all the instruments and all the indications and if you're ready to fly then you go to the fly position which also arms and the throttle and then you can start taxi and then the propeller keeps turning during taxi okay then you have to be in the brakes and then go complete idle and then you open that and there are two steps the first one we want to see 45 here and the next one we want to see 75 and then you can go back okay wait okay that's good all right and then go one more okay so we're looking here 75 ish it's never the okay. and then you can close the, the hatch yeah oh close and it. it will close it yeah oh. if you if you push a little bit yeah we'll close and that's it <laughs> All right, we did it. Yeah, we did it. So I've still got greens here. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. You, you, we look at all the other things and everything is green, so easy. That's it. Okay. Okay, then we're ready. All right. I follow up with the checklist here. And see the panel is nothing is here. The aux pump is on. Trims are checked, flaps are checked. Here we can go for the landing and strobe lights so the other guys see us and then we are ready. Okay, and flaps one. Flaps one is good. And All right. So let's talk about speeds maybe a couple of seconds. <laughs> okay. So rotation is 55. Okay. And then they accelerate to 65, 70, and then we can go flaps up at okay. 70. And then you any, any speed between 75, 85 is good. Okay. So you have to go approximately to 10 degree pitch. Oh, okay. And that's it. Okay. All right. The land traffic Sierra X-ray Delta, Delta is taking off runway one, two. What we can do, we can do a static takeoff, then it's a little bit easier to, to get the correct power setting for you okay. because you have never been that far forward okay. and you have no idea about the response of the throttle. So, it, so and is it, it's full forward? No, no, it's not full forward. Oh, okay. So... We have a limiter, but it's set to a higher number and okay. uh, so we want to observe the 95, so... Okay. Okay, so we are in the brakes and then All you right. can slowly advance it to 95. Yeah, it takes quite a bit of movement initially. Yeah. Okay, now that's good. Okay. And, and release the brakes. Release the brakes. All and right. go. So power is good, speed is alive two times. So here comes 55, you can okay. rotate. There we go. Yeah, super. And here's 70, and you can go flaps up here. Yeah. Flaps up. All right. It's pretty bumpy today. Yeah. Yeah, it's that Florida heat. Yeah, yeah, so. So what's the equivalent uh, Rotax model, like uh, performance-wise, what does this equate to? I guess it's something like the 914 or so. Okay. And you mentioned there were some modifications to uh, outfit this with the motor and batteries? Yes. The yeah, we had to get the tanks removed on the original airframe and then also install the batteries, firewall forward, everything is different. Okay, you can turn crosswind. The land traffic, uh, Sierra X-ray Delta is turning left crosswind to one two. And you can reduce the power to 45. 45. And oh, here you don't hear a lot of difference here, but it's diff difficult to guess. Uh, you have to go a little okay. bit more to the right. Uh, uh, very responsive. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little airplane to fly. <laughs> um, and so there are also two um, screens where you monitor the health of the system. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I mean, we have two screens. One of them is for motor components and motor temperature, engine power and RPM. The lower screen that you saw on the airplane is about batteries and power consumption. So it shows you the uh, power draw on each of the batteries, the left and the right battery. It also shows you the minimum, maximum cell voltage of each of the cells and the batteries and also temperature for each of the cells. And the combination of these uh, data show then the health status and also the charging uh, status of the battery. Okay, so what's going on with the uh, batteries? Is anything cha 
changing with the display here that oh, I should pay no, attention to? No, everything is green. All right. You can have a look and you'll see everything is green. Oh, we're good. Very easy. Yep. Yeah, if you want to, you can do a right hand 360 right. or so. I mean, nobody's here on the traffic pattern. All right. Still on traffic doing a right 360 in uh, the left downwind to 1 2. Clear. Yep. Lots of visibility here. Yeah, it's nice. So what's the normal cruise speed that you get with the 45 setting? Uh, it depends. That's 85 to 90 knots as a, as a nominal value that you typically get here. Now, flying the airplane was um, a lot like any other small airplane in GA. Uh, the big, biggest difference was um, the sound. So when you go uh, advance the throttle, it's not getting as loud. So you don't have the, the same oral cues that you would have otherwise. Um, but, you know, once we got up in the air, we did a, some turns, um, then came back and landed, and it, it handled a very responsive airframe um, and um, just what I would expect. Yeah, I think you did a very good job at flying the airplane. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a nice, a nice airplane, yeah. comfortable and good field of view. Yeah, like visibility was great, uh, responsive controls. Um, and so the Bristol airframe um, has a number of engine options. And so this, um, when it's certified, will be added to the list and of uh, a huge range. Then power back. Yeah, slightly, yeah. Oh. You can go back to 20 or so. All right. And then we have to bleed off speed because we are over the flap limit speed okay. at the moment. So we have to go to 75 knots now. 75 knots. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's okay. a good power setting. And I can give you a little bit back trim if you want to. Okay. And that feels a little bit awkward because okay. I guess for you, the nose is super high now in your seating position. Yeah, it does feel <laughs> Okay. Right. But it's okay. okay. That's normal. And we can go flaps one. Flaps. Yeah. And flaps two. All and right. you can turn left. Delan tra traffic, uh, Sierra X-ray Delta is turning left base, one, two. So what's the final approach? Uh, with that question, I would say 70 knots is a good approach speed. Oh. Might be a little bit of reserve, typically it's 65. Okay. But it's quite bumpy, so right. add a little bit is good, I think. Delan traffic, traffic right. We're doing good, 72 knots right now, super. To land traffic, Sierra X-ray Delta is on final to one two. We hear from the pilots um, is is the quietness, so you can fly and take off your earphones. Um, the performance, it handles very, very well. The torque on that, we'll see the first ones in uh, mid-27, uh, first quarter to second quarter of mid-27 here in the United States. The retail price will be uh, 500,000 US dollars, but we have a, a special um, founder's edition, a launch edition, which uh, comes under uh, uh, 440, around 440. Well, you have to look at it over the lifetime of the airplane. And that's where it gets quite interesting, right? Uh, we have battery replacements here. So the money that you would put in, in for gasoline would go into a piggy bank and that you would use that for battery replacements. And the nice thing about that is that you're getting better technology, right? Of X amount of times you change it, you know, battery density is, is increasing. So you're also investing in, in, in something in the future. So your airplane should, in theory, is be getting better and better. So the production version of this airplane will have an endurance of uh, an hour plus 10 minutes of reserves, um, and which makes it suited to the flight training market. Uh, so the idea is um, just like we went out and we took a lap around the pattern, um, students will do local pattern work. They'll come back, debrief while the airplane is charging and then go back out again. So what do you think? What do you think is the next phase for GA and alternate propulsion?